Hey, howdy everybody. As part of my graduate level course in subsurface modeling, I've been requiring the students to prepare regular updates every couple of weeks, including an oral presentation and a written, a written document update. And so um, I'm one of those folks who feel that I don't really have much business assigning something I wouldn't be willing to do myself. So I have in fact completed the first update assigned to my students and I will be giving this presentation in class on Monday so that they get an example of what the presentations could look like or should look like so that they're ready for their presentations on Friday. The actual document that I prepared is shown here. I'll put it out on GitHub and so it provides an executive summary of all of the work that I did. A description of the workflow and methods, including the you know loading of data, checking summary statistics of the data, plotting the data, the spatial location maps, the data distributions, a little bit of outlier detection and trying to investigate that a bit. Comparison between what's observed at the well locations and what's observed over the entire seismic map. That's a very good indicator of whether or not we have some type of bias going on and also initial interpretation of reservoir depositional setting, kind of that initial look at what could be going on. And so you can, I'll provide this on GitHub and a link with this video. And so this is all just worked up, really pretty straightforward stuff using matplotlib and uh, lib and also um, I think a little bit of geostats.py, some numpy, pretty straightforward, um, pandas, data frames. And so if you go through it, you'll find out that I have my conclusions, but I don't want to go through all that right now because I'm going to spoil my talk. And so what I'll do right now is I'll just practice or show you what one of these presentations would look like in, in my class. And I'll put this up on YouTube so that my students are able to check this out before they do the presentation themselves, even if they miss class on Monday. So let me begin. I'll get into mode here, into character, and I'll do my presentation as if I am a senior reservoir modeler for the Moose Jaw Reservoir Asset Team. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I only have about five minutes to present to all of you today. I want to provide you an update of what we've done on the team. Here's my executive summary slide. You can see that we just started out with our univariate, a little bit of spatial, not very quantitative, but spatial analysis, looking at the data. And we want to basically check the data, formulate any initial subsurface hypotheses and give ourselves a little bit of direction as far as what we should do moving into the future. The work included visualization, data distributions, location maps. We did it by combined and also dividing by facies, sand and shale. Calculation summary statistics and some outlier detection. Comparison of what's going on at the wells versus what's the mapped, the full exhaustive map of acoustic impedance and initial interpretation of depositional setting. What's the results for the rest of the team going forward? Data coverage looks really good. The entire in area of interest has pretty good sampling. It's not regular, it's not random. We do have good indication that there is some bias in the sampling. Better prosty locations or regions are sampled more densely. Strong directionality in the property spatial distributions. That'll feed into our interpretation I provide later. Property distributions, geometries are consistent with a weakly confined deep water channel system. That's our initial hypothesis at this moment. Future modeling work should integrate facies, debiasing because we suspect there is spatial clustering or a bias in the way we sampled the reservoir, and we're going to have to account for directionality and trends. This is not homogeneous. There is definitely reservoir architecture to contend with here as far as plumbing in the subsurface. What did we do for our workflow? We loaded the common delimited files that were provided to us into um, Jupyter Notebook, Pandas data frames for the specific data tables for wells, ND array for the seismic information, check summary statistics. We're looking for invalid values, missing values, negative values, processes greater than one, anything that would be non-physical. Plotting of data distributions and spatial location maps. We did our plotting by faces and also combined. We checked both. Outlier detection, we used the two key, the 
standard 1.5 times the interquartile range approach. The thing I like about that, it has no distribution assumptions, so it's pretty flexible in the presence of skewed and symmetric distributions. Comparison of well and map-based seismic data. We did conduct a student's t-test for difference in means with pooled variance. We're going for extra points. We want to put some significance on our assessments. Initial interpretation of reservoir depositional setting, architectural elements. So let's look at the results. Location maps, as I said before, if you look at the various petrophysical properties, we have porosities here under my face, acoustic impedance, permeability, and facies. You can generally note that there's a very good sampling. We have exhaustive sampling of the area of interest. There's no areas where we have to be too concerned about extrapolation. At the same time, if you look at porosity, you'll see higher density sampling in the high porosity locations, lower density in the lower. We're suspecting there's definitely a sampling bias we have to contend with. Permeability, you can see that very st strong positive skew on the distribution, some very high values and a lot of very low values. It seems to map quite well related to what's going on with porosity. And, and acoustic impedance looks like it's inversely related to porosity. Could be a very good, very good predictor of what's going on with reservoir quality. We'll look at that further. Results as far as the bifaces property distributions, porosity, permeability, and acoustic impedance, you can see that by shale and sand, there is a significant difference. That multimodal behavior you see if you don't consider them separately is definitely being driven by facies. So clearly there's a strong porosity permeability acoustic impedance dependence on facies. You can confirm this by looking at the summary statistics by sand and by shale. And what you'll see is that there's significant differences in any of the statistics, the means, the minimums, the P25s, and so forth, are all quite significantly different. If we look for outliers using the two-key method across all of the properties and flag wells that have any one of the properties identified as a potential outlier, what you'll find is the yellow are the outliers here. And you can look at them and you'll see that there's quite a few wells that um, exceed that criteria for one of the properties. But if you look at the maps, you look at back at the maps, the properties are pretty continuous. The distributions have kind of fat tails to them. And so my assessment is that it's not a data issue, but in fact, perhaps areas of interest that we should look at later. Comparison to acoustic impedance over the entire gridded map versus well data, the distributions are significantly shifted. Wells are in red, blue for seismic. You can see strong degree of overlap, but shift. The CDFs are pretty clear that what you're seeing is a shift to higher acoustic impedance when you look at the seismic. Preferential drilling in the low acoustic impedance, the high porosity locations. And finally, an initial interpretation. So this is the map of acoustic impedance with all of the well acoustic impedance superimposed on top of it. And what you can see is very, very interesting that we have these channels of lower acoustic impedance surrounded by higher acoustic impedance regions. This could in fact be sand filled channels. The fact that we have them separated, there looks like there's some avulsions going on. Perhaps it's a weakly confined deep water channel system. Of course, a larger seismic image to be able to start mapping out the morphology of the actual slope valley and so forth. But at this point, this does seem like a consistent story as far as the property distributions are consistent with what we'd see for a deep water setting and the overall geometries and directionality seems to be indicative of that. Although we could have alternative hypotheses for sure, we do see a general trend of what looks like an increasing acoustic impedance as we move from this top corner to over here. And so you could wonder if maybe that's just um, we have some type of finding going on within the channel. Often deep water channels will be more continuous for large length scales. So that might be a concern. It might suggest that we're more shallow water. But at this time, we'll go ahead with assuming a deep water system. Conclusions from the initial univariate and spatial investigation. Very qualitative spatial investigation. Biphases workflows are definitely going to be required for the subsurface modeling. We can see a lot of the heterogeneity is captured or the property distributions are strongly dependent on facies. Data debiasing should also be investigated. We have good reason to believe that we in fact have a bias in the sampling at the well locations. Directionality and trends must be included in the subsurface model. They look like 
critical parts of the subsurface heterogeneity. And the reservoir may be, we suspect at this time, a weakly confined deep water channelized system. All right, I hope that was useful. I'll put this up on YouTube for my students for the first update. Of course, for those of you following along with the course, I will also put an example data set up on GitHub, put a link to it so people can try this out on their own. Once my students have completed this update, I will in fact put my worksheets and work up on GitHub. I don't want to put it up before they finish. It would be just a little too easy if I put up exactly how I did it and don't give them a chance to explore on their own. What else? Well, as always, I'm Michael Perch, an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I hope that this is helpful and I'm glad that there are people interested in following along. We're having a lot of fun in the course. We've got 40 students of nice full graduate studies elective with great discussions. Appreciation to the Jackson School at University of Texas. They gave us a new classroom because the room got our class got too large for my room over in petroleum and geosystems engineering. And it was a very nice modern room donated and built by Chevron. My old employer, who I love Chevron, and boy, thank you for that room. It is a wonderful modern room. So, all right, take care, everybody.